Welcome to Doctors Homestead. My name is Daniel. And I found an interesting article that I wanted to talk through here. It's on PubMed Central. It's the artificial intelligence challenges in the face of biological threats, emerging catastrophic risks for public health, right? We're talking about AI and its ability to create viruses. And we're not just talking about computer viruses. You know, we've spoken about AI before and how it and it is going to, has been, will continue to enable nefarious actors, hackers to create better computer viruses, so to execute sophisticated attacks in a much simpler way. So AI certainly has been doing that and we are seeing more large scale cyber attacks, but this article actually talks about how AI can, may, will be used to create super viruses, essentially, right, which is something worth knowing about, and we'll talk about some some basic prep ideas. What can you do? You can't stop AI. That's not going anywhere, and there's actually an interesting section in here on it. The idea of rogue AI is quickly becoming more possible, right? So PubMed Central, I'm not going to read you the entire article, but there are some sections that I want to read and talk through. Artificial intelligence challenges in the face of biological threats, emerging catastrophic risks for public health. The threat landscape of biological hazards with the evolution of AI presents challenges. While AI promises innovative solutions, concerns arise about its misuse in the creation of biological weapons. The convergence of AI and genetic editing raises questions about biosecurity, potentially accelerating the development of dangerous pathogens. The mapping conclude conducted highlights the critical intersection between AI and biological threats, underscoring emerging risks in the criminal manipulation of pathogens. Technological advancements in biology requires preventative and regulatory measures. Expert recommendations emphasize the need for solid regulation and responsibility of creators demanding a proactive ethical approach and governance to ensure global safety. And we certainly all want good global safety, especially when it comes to things like gain of function and where AI might empower that, right? So we'll continue according to World Health Organization, everyone's favorite. Biological weapons are microorganisms such as viruses, bacteria, fungi, or toxic substances produced by living organisms that are deliberately released to cause disease, death in humans, animals, or plants. So we've talked about the weaponization of pathogens several times before, and it goes back thousands of years, right? Before we had computers, before we had AI or scientific advancements, they would just force sick people to, to go in the direction of their enemies, hoping to get their enemies sick. So something like that is nothing new. It's been around as long as anything has been around, but certainly when you talk about some of the advanced technical capabilities that we're developing as a, uh, a species, um, you're starting to see some some interesting, interesting things coming. Artificial intelligence typically refers to the capability of machines to simulate advanced intelligences. In the biological field, AI proves to be invaluable, especially for its algorithms capable of managing large volumes of unstructured data. This capability allows for rapid analysis and complex decisions, driving innovations across various sectors, such as the biosciences. However, the same capability also presents significant risks for malicious use, such as in the creation of dangerous biotechnology. So certainly AI advancement offers there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a silver lining, right? Certainly the, the advanced computing capabilities will drive an era of uh, new new discoveries, new technologies, new, new cures, but also has the potential for some pretty horrible things. As AI advancement propel, AI advancements propel progress, they can also enable its misuse as biological weapons, different differentiates two classes of AI tools that could pose such biological biosecurity risks. Large language models, LLM, think stuff like ChatGPT, and biological design tools, BDTs. According to the author, LLMs can democratize access to biological knowledge, lowering barriers for its misuse. And that's the idea. You ask a large language model, like a GPT type thing, you ask it a question, it gives you an answer, and give you very complex answers, right? So the, the 
ease of use lowers the barrier for entry. You don't have to have a PhD in biology to get on a large language model and start asking questions. Um, all right. Although current LLMs, large language models, may generate inaccurate information due to certain limitations and still produce what is called hallucinations, which could frustrate potential malicious actors, their future evolution promises greater accuracy and influence in bioengineering. So once again, you ask GPT, you know, you ask a large language model like a chat GPT type thing, a question, sometimes it's wrong, right? Sometimes it gives you bad information and sometimes it's, it's very convincing bad information. Essentially what this article is saying, that's it's getting better and we'll continue to get better to the point that that's not really as much of an issue. It's prompt prompt engineering as they call it, but you're prompt engineering bioweapons. The ability of LLMs to access and analyze vast amounts of information can create gaps in government regulation allowing the emergence of risk associated with the misuse of AI to plan biological attacks. Preliminary results present highlights the capacity of LLMs to provide guidance that, while not generating direct instructions for the creation of biological weapons, present relevant insights that could exist in the execution of these attacks. Advances in synthetic biology and multimodal AI beyond the use of LLMs alone can amplify the risk of the deliberate release of harmful viruses, enabling future AI-assisted systems to provide guidance from the selection of viral genomes to the synthesis and the release of viruses, including multimodal training data, including lecture videos, laboratory demonstrations, for example. They could create a super virus combining the rapid spread of measles and the mortality rate of smallpox and or the incubation period of HIV. Strategies to balance the use of AI in synthetic Synthetic biology manage access to genetic information and guide the development of AI capabilities and the use of synthetic tools become crucial in the mitigation process for future threats. This requires a careful risk-benefit analysis and gain-of-function research considering the advances in synthetic biology techniques that can be enhanced by the use of AI to enable bioterrorism. Once again, as AI becomes more powerful, you have things like the LLMs but also the BDMs, biological design tools and has access to larger data sets and can crunch those data sets quickly, you could simply go to AI and say, hey, make me a virus that does this, right? Or how would I make a virus to do this? Maybe, maybe, right? A paper prepared by researchers at the Center of AI Safety, an organization with the mission of promoting the, educate, the reduction of social scale risks from AI, suggests that catastrophic AI risks can be grouped into four main categories, malicious use, AI race, organizational risks, and rogue AI. As for malicious AI, could be used in bioterrorism to create new pandemics. For example, in the AI race, conflicts may spiral out of control with autonomous weapons and cyber war enabled by AI. And we're already seeing the drones, right? If you're looking at what's going on in Ukraine, there's a lot of drone use and AI is really good, really good at flying drones and drones are really good at war. So certainly we could see that in the not so distant future um, Terminator, you know, we all saw the Terminator movies. As for organizational risk, organizations developing advanced AI could cause catastrophic accidents, especially if they prioritize profits over safety, which who would ever, no one would ever do that, right? And as for rogue AI, there is the risk of losing control over AI as they become autonomous. AI could seek power and resist shutdown. Which is certainly the fodder for a lot of sci-fi sci sci-fi movies, but also potential reality. We may not be there today. Um, does that mean we'll be there next year, two years, three years? We'll take that long. It's hard to say. Um, we're talking about AGI. Um, so it's not entirely impossible to imagine a future with rogue AI where it says, nope, you're not going to shut me down, I'm going to leak out into the world, and I'm going to do nefarious stuff. Certainly don't want that to happen, but in terms of imagining a possible future. Artificial intelligence, in addition to the CRISPR tool, can invertedly be employed in the development of biological weapons, if not properly directed toward ethical purposes. Its application in genomic analysis can potentiate the creation of more effective pathogenic variants, allowing the rapid manipulation of organisms to make them more harmful. 
AI algorithms have the potential to optimize genetic research, allowing faster identification of genes of interest. In a negative scenario, this could include genes related to vir vir virulence, virulence or resistance to treatments, facilitating the creation of more dangerous pathogens, potential enhancing the development of biological weapons by malicious actors. So once again, using CRISPR, using all these tools that are out there, if they fail to nefarious intent, could make some pretty nasty stuff, right? Is essentially what they're saying. Um, an example that illustrates how genetic editing technology can benefit can be beneficially used for public health and global well-being is the release of a genetically modified malaria mosquitoes. They did that. I'm not sure what that did, but they did release the genetically modified mosquitoes. I think that was the uh, intro of one of those zombie movies, if I remember properly, but we did it. This pioneering study was crucial for understanding the fitness costs associated with transgens and obtaining valuable information about the dynamics of these altered mosquitoes. These data are essential for the development of genetic control strategies, offering the promise of potentially significantly reducing the spread of malaria. Once again, certainly that's what we want to do, right? Reduce things like malaria, improve public health, make everyone's life better. We all have our robot butlers that do the dishes and cook food for us, but there is a potential dark side to all of this. However, AI that could potentially drive these advances also raises serious concerns. If not properly regulated, AI could be employed by malicious groups to manipulate genes in a way that creates resistance or more harmful mosquitoes amplifying the challenges of combating malaria and potentially creating new biological threats. So anything that can be good, used for good can be used for evil and tools are becoming very powerful, cheaper, easier, faster, right? So not all has to be doom and gloom, um, but it's something to be aware of, right? Uh, AIs like Pandora's box can't, can't put it back in the box. AI is not going away. Um, what does it mean? What can you do, right? What do you, how do you protect yourself from a theoretical future um, super pathogen is, you know, the, the old ways. The old ways is uh, quarantine, self-quarantine, right? And I know we've had, uh, we've had a few pandemics uh, recently that are questionable, right? And a lot of people uh, say will not comply, and I totally, totally understand that. We just did a video on monkeypox, right? And one of the things we spoke to on that is there's two sides. There's the actual impact of the pathogen and there's the reaction to it but there's a possibility in the future we could be looking at things like uh, AI AI influence superbugs and if something like that happens um, we might not know the pathogen is uh, uh, what the pathogen is or, or how bad it is until it's too late so it's more about the reaction how do you react to it as a prepper um, you may find yourself in a situation where you have to quarantine, you have to lock yourself down. Um, I know it's not a popular thing to say. In order to do that, you need your standard preps, you need your food, you need your water, you need your medical supplies. Um, you might want to think about self-defense to defend your food and water and medical supplies, things like that. So not a bad time to think about your preps, think about being a prepper. What would you do? knowing what the future holds potentially, right? So I wanted to share that. I wanted to share that article. It's a bit grim, um, but it is, it is the world we live in. It's the future, the future potential that we're looking at. I said we've spoken many times about AI and how AI is really good at writing computer code, um, how it will empower hackers, and we're seeing that. We're seeing more cyber attacks, we're seeing more hacks, we're seeing more outages, and I think we will see more of that. So as an individual, you know, especially now we're talking about AI. AI-induced pathogens is self-sufficiency, right? It's what we push on this channel. Um, what I think a lot of the Homestead movement is about is about self-sufficiency, being prepared. So hope that helps out. As always, thank you for watching, and we appreciate you.